Uh, okay. Perfect. So um, I'm really happy to be here and talk a bit about intranet uh, strategy trends. And uh, when I suggested the topic, uh, Janos was saying, oh, that's uh, like, is this really a current topic? And should we talk about intranet? And who is like everyone, I guess, talks about AI and chat GPT and, and robotics and other things. Um, we think it's actually a pretty interesting topic. Um, not sure if uh, everyone knows here, but uh, uh, even Gardner, after many years, will bring out actually a magic quadrant for intranets later this year. Um, so there seems to be something going on in the intranet space. And uh, I wanted to give you a perspective uh, from my side, like what's going on there. Um, so, and what's my perspective is I'm one of the co-founders of StaffBase. StaffBase is an intranet software, um, but I don't look at this just as a vendor. Um, I've been building intranets for like about 15 years before founding StaffBase. So I've seen a lot of technologies in the market, a lot of open source, a lot of Microsoft, a lot of uh, also social business platforms um, and wanted to give you a short overview where we see, like, why is it still relevant? Um, where we see the market, what's the trend and give you one, two ideas, like especially why we do things at StaffBase that we do and so on, right? Um, I know uh, I've been uh, at a lot of groups uh, from, from Janus over the years. Uh, I know it, it was always a bit of like, don't be, don't promote the company, just tell add value. That's what I'm trying to do today. Um, uh, I, I just will use StaffBase a bit in terms of uh, Here's what's happening because that's something I can talk a lot about. Um, and maybe one aspect of this, why is this a good time to talk about intranets? Um, if I'm not sure if you've seen it, there has been a report by Clearbox. And if you are in the intranet space, if you've been dealing with Microsoft intranets over the past years, you should know Clearbox. They are the major analyst for intranets worldwide based in the UK. And they've covered especially Microsoft related intranets for many years. And they've now uh, launched a report, actually the second version. It's now about two weeks old. And the cool thing about this report, it's free for end users. So as a vendor, we have to pay to come in. So all vendors have to pay. But if you go to their website and you say, I want to have a market overview of all the current intranets with a lot of screenshots, with a lot of details, and including also Microsoft and what they're doing with the Viva suite and so on, this is the place to go. Just one warning, the whole thing has 770 pages, so uh, beware. But it's, uh, I think it's a great resource to learn about the current state of intranet. And the perspective that I wanna do this, and I hope you don't say I'm, I'm bragging here, um, Clearbox actually ranked intranets in this report based on um, eight categories, and StaffBase was the one that won five categories out of the eight. Um, and uh, uh, there are others, uh, like also major vendors, like, like Microsoft with SharePoint and Viva and so on, who uh, uh, scored pretty well, but they didn't rank in any category as an outstanding. And what I want to talk about today is a bit, we don't think we are better and we are building better software or whatever. I want to talk about what's the trend, like why um, is are things changing? What are these categories? How do does an analyst look like in an intranet today? And what are uh, yeah? Why is it uh, that this is changing? And uh, that's the perspective I can offer. So first, I want to talk about what's the current state of intranets, um, and then we look into what is a good intranet in 2023, um, and especially. Um, I think also in, in whenever we talk about intranets, is also the question, what is Microsoft doing? Because even though they never really wanted to build intranets, they are really dominating the market for many years now. Um, and uh, that's also something I will cover. And also happy for any discussion. I don't really see the chat, uh, but Janos will uh, stop me and ask any question that's relevant um, during so uh, the presentation. Perfect. Um, so the internet market observations, if you look at um, top analysts and you, uh, I, I know we all uh, experienced the pandemic in the, in the past, now it's nearly three years. And we've seen internets got to rise again as kind of a digital home or digital front door for companies 
now in times when people are more dispersed than ever, a hybrid work um, is the thing. I, I haven't yet met a company where people all returned to office. People pretty much stayed at home and continue to stay at home. So the internet has become a very important place. A some people call it campus. Uh, some call it the living room. Some call it the front door uh, or, or even the shop window of the company. Um, as, a, as a digital home for employees. Um, you see this, uh, how Gardner talks about the market, how, how Forrester talks about the market, and how intranet projects also uh, like keep on coming up in RFIs and RFPs across the world. Um, actually, um, we work with Gardner for the last five years. Um, Gardner at one time, like three years ago, had just one analyst covering intranet. They now have three. Uh, because they say, oh, we get so many requests from it and we need more people to actually cover it. So that's quite interesting. One other thing that happens is when you talk about intranet, there's a second term coming up and it's called employee communication application. Um, so that's a term that was, I think, first uh, coined by Gardner in 2018. So it's five years ago, nearly now. And what's happening is that a lot of the intranets that we see um, is are very much communication focused. We will talk in a second why this is the case and why things evolve. Um, so what uh, the analysts see and what we see in the market is that intranets and employee communication applications are kind of converging more and more together. Like uh, whenever you talk about a new modern intranet, some companies even call it, we need an employee communications platform and mean pretty much the internet uh, it, uh, with it. And that's also a quite interesting uh, kind of shift in, in how things are evolving. Gartner puts these employee comms applications uh, in their priority metrics for the next year as a transformational technology for the next years to come. That's one thing that happened. And the other thing that happened is Microsoft. If you're Microsoft customers, and I think most here will be, you will have seen that Microsoft has a fundamental shift in their product strategy around Microsoft 365 and how they approach an intranet. Five years ago, we all would have agreed the intranet with Microsoft is pretty much SharePoint. Um, what Microsoft now does is uh, clearly looking at Teams as the front door to the digital workplace. So Teams clearly gets all the focus and Teams clearly is the number one in terms of this is where I start my day and SharePoint isn't anymore. And with Teams uh, add-ons like the Viva apps, these are apps that live inside Teams and can do specific things like Viva Connections for communications or Viva Engage, which is the former Yammer and so on. You will know, I think, many of these topics. Microsoft actually moved from a very open platform you could do a lot of things with SharePoint to a very more standardized approach and to say, we have a lot more ready to go plug and play tools uh, that live inside Teams that are the, the Viva tools. And we move step by step a lot of the functionality that SharePoint had formerly into Viva, right? Um, this has some major implications for the internet market. The most important one is it, like five years ago, if you're Microsoft strategy and you said like, I need a new intranet, it was a no brainer to say the new intranet is going to be SharePoint. The question was just which add-on do I pick? Which consulting company do I pick to build the intranet based on SharePoint? Today, that's a decision that's very hard to take because SharePoint itself is not a strategic product for Microsoft anymore to be the intranet. And with some latest Viva apps like Viva Amplify, Microsoft even moved out the, the news creation out of SharePoint into a new tool. So if you are a small company today, I think world became very easy with Microsoft because you just say, hey, I have these ready to go Viva apps much better than before. If you're a large company with a lot of requirements around personalization, around information architecture, you are actually, I would say, left with a big question mark. What's your internet strategy based on Microsoft? Because um, it's it fits to the smaller ones. For the bigger ones, not so clear anymore. So that's that's the current status that we see in the market. And uh, in order to understand what's happening in the market, I would love to 
talk a bit about what are the challenges that, that we see. Typically, I haven't seen a lot of companies who are saying our intranet doesn't have enough features or we need to do it more or we need more content. Typically, it's the other way around. It's complex, um, it uh, has low engagement, it's hard to personalize things, um, reach is a big topic, so it's very hard to reach frontline workers, it's very hard to reach uh, employees on different channels or different devices. And it's usually something that had to be built uh, with a lot of uh, reliance on IT in the past. Um, and a lot of us, and I've been in these projects for, for many, many years, um, know that if you think about a new intranet, you pretty much had like three major groups of requirements. And the first one is the internet as a front door. Some people also said shop window in the past, where you have the whole topics around communication, uh, around more interaction, so communities, but communities are more like these, these larger top-down communities across the company, and the internet as a service point, right? So employee self-services, important information that I need for my work. That's all the internet as a front door. The internet as a library was usually a place where you said all the knowledge uh, topics, where we don't know else where to go, where to where to put it in, all the documents. Let's put this in the internet because after all, it should be it could be also a library, right? And with, for instance, SharePoint uh, was often used as internet. It was kind of built initially as a library, so it was a good fit for that. The library function, by the way, is was a reason why a lot of the internets are like ending up with thousands and thousands of pages and documents and feel pretty cluttered, uh, to be honest. And the last part that was around uh, like 10, 12 years ago now when we had social business coming in um, and the, the whole team uh, collaboration movement, um, collaboration became part of an intranet. So a lot of the SharePoint intranets I've built, uh, there was a clear requirement. We need team rooms for collaboration in there systems like Jive or also uh, systems like uh, uh, Workplace by Meta, um, they are coming from that area um, of, of an approach. And what you typically would try to do is to say, these are the requirements, let's have one big intranet portal and bring this all together. And that's kind of the last wave of intranet we've seen. And I personally have built a lot of these intranets in the past. And the challenge is that because you try to find a compromise between these three uh, things, you typically ended up with a compromise. So on the front door side, you have it's very cluttered and it felt really hard to reach everyone because usually because of all the content and all like uh, the, the confidentiality of the content, you couldn't bring this to a personal device, to a mobile phone and so on. The library side was just cluttered uh, search usually was was not really good and the collaboration side typically was a place to put things but it was nothing to go and actually do the collaborative work and do the work right so that's something where we're coming from and what we see and and like uh, in the teaser i said like here's the shift what's happening now the shift that we are seeing is we see a clear trend towards specialization and this means the first thing that happened was Microsoft Teams or Slack. So we've seen a new way to do collaboration, messaging and conferencing and all integrated into one software. And this clearly has won this whole collaboration category. So nobody that would build an intranet today would ever think about putting collaboration in the scope of an intranet, which is remarkable because 10 years ago, it was in every intranet concept, right? So collaboration went out. And on the other side, we have sort of a revolution from the communication side of things. And that's where like staff base was involved uh, over the years. Uh, we started off with a with an employee app, uh, so a way to better reach frontline workers. And these modern front door intranets, the whole idea is to say, let's have a lightweight intranet, which is communication focused, which reaches everyone, which is very easy to maintain because it doesn't hold a lot of content but it holds the relevant stuff that we need for, for employees. That's the front door side. And the library side is still a side that you need and that will always be there. Um, and in most of the companies that we see, technically actually 
it's still a SharePoint and it will be something like a SharePoint for, for many years to come. So that's it, that's the situation. And from a staff side of things, we we initially went into this market. I've seen a lot of failed internet portals. That were, that's why we said, let's focus on the comp side of things um, and on the front door side of things. Um, the library is always there, it's SharePoint, and the collaboration side is always there with Teams and other things, right? Um, now you could say, what's the Microsoft view on this? The Microsoft view, as I talked about before, is pretty much the same, right? So they are saying Shepard will be there. It goes to the background step by step. It's still the repository. It's still the technical basis for a lot of services that are happening in the Microsoft ecosystem. Um, and for the front door side, Microsoft released a couple of smaller tools like the Viva uh, Connections app, Viva Engage, and Viva Amplify is going to come, I think, later this year. Nobody knows exactly, I think mid-year. Um, it's more like a, a communication solution to kind of uh, send communication into multiple channels uh, from the Microsoft side of things. So the interesting thing is even Microsoft has adopted this approach and is saying there is no big portal anymore. We will see uh, things are cutting off here, right? And I think the interesting thing in general is if you're building a new intranet today, if you're thinking about a new intranet concept, um, no real good intranet consultant would ever say it's going to be SharePoint because the point is with a lot of these decisions on the left side, especially for Amplify, um, Microsoft will not any, invest anymore in anything that creates, for instance, use in SharePoint because that's moving over to Amplify. And um, so we have a, a world here where um, the, the future intranet is, is very much built in these in these Viva apps that you see on the left. SharePoint is going moving a bit to the to the back end and collaboration. I think it's clearly covered by Teams and Viva. So that's the sort of a Microsoft approach, and that's for us as an intranet vendor and the intranet market in general. That's now an interest, interesting situation because um, the clear here's the one tool for Microsoft to build an intranet, that picture is not clear anymore. If you have, if you're a large company today, if you have a lot of money and you say, I want to build an intranet, you shouldn't build it in SharePoint anymore because that's not a strategic product in that area for Microsoft. And you cannot build it in Viva because these Viva apps cannot be changed. They are pretty much ready-made products. Um, we, uh, we acquired uh, a Microsoft add-on vendor, Valo, um, about one year ago, we got a lot of Microsoft MVPs and experts, and we tried in deep analysis what we can build on top of the whole Viva suite and Viva apps, and there's surprisingly little to build on the left side. So um, the setup here, to sum this up, and I hope that's not too complex or not too much too deep in the Microsoft strategy, this is actually good news for smaller companies because Microsoft much more gets in a ready to use scenarios. If you're a smaller company, let's say up to 500 employees, it's a bit mixed message for larger medium size or enterprise companies because um, the left side is clearly not enough and you cannot build more with money because there's nothing to build. And SharePoint itself is not a basis anymore for an internet. And I think that's sort of also a bit of the interesting aspect of the third party internet market, like other internet vendors and stuff is just one of them of many others where we say, hey, it looked like Microsoft owns this market, but for mid-size up to enterprise, actually with this Microsoft strategy, this market is opening up to uh, internet vendors. And that's a bit um, where we are coming in from and where we are positioning ourselves in as a front door internet. What is the front door intranet? I, I just wanted to add two more uh, aspects of it to, to kind of explain this. And uh, the, the three priorities that a front door intranet should have are actually uh, also coming from Gartner because they are uh, planning on their magic watch run for later this year. And uh, we asked the Gartner analysts, like what's, the, what's on the list? Like what's the top three things you think 
a an internet should should have today, right? And they say the the requirement that we hear most often that's most important is communication. An internet should be a great employee communications platform. Um, the second one we hear is employee services. So give either as part of the internet or give access to third party services to link out or to integrate these services in the internet. Um, and the last one is a have a, like a front door, a starting point for applications and other resources. Resources could be HR resources or things like that. So that's that's the functional priorities for for this uh, front door internet. And one last point about communication that I would like to make is um, from the communication side, intranets um, are ten years ago. Uh, in intranet RFIs and RFPs, you would read things like, "We build an intranet as the single place for everyone to go to, like as a single destination." And typically, that destination was the desktop. And today we've seen this has changed entirely and we see a much uh, greater emphasis on the omni-channel approach and the employee experience and to say, I want my intranet to be where people are. Like if somebody is in Teams the whole day, I want the intranet in Teams. If somebody is not in Teams but on a desktop, I want it to be on a great desktop experience. If I have a frontline employee, I want this on a mobile phone, even on a personal mobile device. Um, if it's an employee in a plant, maybe I have it on a screen, maybe I have it in social media, maybe I have it in email and so on. So the, the whole idea is to say I have multiple channels, but I have one platform to create content, to plan content, and also to analyze everything back together. So Frank, we're coming maybe, up at the end. Yeah. Uh, Here's one, here's just one idea out of stuff based, like in terms of when you say, oh, what does multi-channel mean? It means if you have a, a intranet news, which you see on the, that's that's uh, my co-founder, Martin, um, on the left side, um, these modern intranets have more like a multi-channel, uh, also analytics understanding in terms of like, where where are you going, uh, right? Um, and maybe last, uh, last example here, in terms of where things are going for larger enterprises. And this is GE. Um, GE did split up in the past into uh, from one company into three different companies. It's a major change project that they've done. And they wanted a new intranet for this. And they've written the RFP for the intranet. And it said, like, we are looking for an employee communications platform with multiple channels and then a list of the channels. and and everything that brings everything together. What they actually meant was we want an intranet. So the interesting thing is um, the, the terms employee comms and intranets are merging more together. It's becoming the key requirement. And uh, if you think about the overall concept and uh, maybe as a as a last thing, I would go back to this uh, screen. That's sort of the it makes a ton of sense if you think about this new model of specialization. Great. So I stop here. We are coming up to the end and uh, open for Thank questions. Thank you, Frank. As, uh, it's as if, uh, you know, um, I've seen you on stage. Uh, I think we started perhaps 10 years ago and touring groups in Zurich and Frankfurt and Cologne, always with this energy and great insights. So Thank you very much. Uh, I took a bunch of notes here, um, some good slides. Um, there was one quick question. I don't want to talk too much about other tools, uh, but perhaps just quickly your view on how do you see Yammer in this uh, Microsoft um, picture? Yammer is a, is a great topic uh, because um, typically I see two types of customers. One is a customer who doesn't use Yammer because they didn't introduce it or they tried and failed. And the other one is they use Yammer, and Yammer is a highly loved tool for a limited audience. So a typical Yammer customer has about five to ten percent of employees on Yammer, but they really love it. Um, Yammer, I've I've never seen a Yammer instance kind of developing into a real employee comms tool with a larger reach of like 60, 70, 80 percent. Um, so the use case, I 
definitely think it's there um, to have a bottom up approach with these groups and so on. Um, and the, so it makes sense if it's there. I would never switch it off if, and, and never question it. Definitely. If you look into these, the frontal library collaboration, I would say Yammer is a bit in between. Typically, would, we would say you have two types of communities. One is a top down, more centrally guarded community. They should be in the front or internet. That's something, for instance, that Stackbase also supports. Yammer is for me more on the collaboration side, um, cross silo, cross functional. And usually, Yammer struggles more with teams. Like, if you have teams already, can you still even introduce Yammer and so on? So that's, I hope that's. The, the, the answer is as messy as the question with you. I know it wasn't an easy uh, yes or no, please. But um, I think with that, and there's some good chat in here, also comments, uh, other views on Yammer. Uh, like I said, I'll summarize this. Um, thank you, Frank, for taking the time. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, I will send an email to everybody with the slides and the highlights.